This is WWE superstar Drew McIntyre, and you're listening to the WWE Podcast. The one that everybody wants, me. Says I just your ass. This is my iron. You're going to acknowledge me. Hey guys, welcome to the WWE Podcast Mailbag. It's Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. Let's get to the mailbag. Let's get to all the patrons as they take priority. I may even play some or get to some old voicemails I didn't get to during WrestleMania week. And uh, just to make up for it, I'll, I'll do my best. The mailbag isn't as full as last week, but we'll, we'll see how long it takes me to get through it and prioritize the patrons. And speaking of patrons, got to give shout outs to the new patrons, Grant Fry and Cody, Cody M. Medarios, Cody and Grant. Thank you guys for joining. Hope you enjoy the content. You got you can join Cody and Grant over at Patreon.com slash WWE podcast if you want to get everything ad free or on Apple podcast too so let's get to our first patron and actually one more shout out that person is to the botch guy over on youtube we have done collabs in the past it's difficult with him to do because he's on the western side of canada and he's several hours behind me so when when he recorded and when i record just it's difficult to match up our time zones it's you know that's the reason we haven't got a whole lot of content as of the last six months really, and the reason I'm mentioning him is not just because he's just so much fun to watch on YouTube. I'd really encourage you to go over to the uh, botch guy on YouTube, but he is actually featured in part on the Rock's Instagram. I'm not kidding. <laughs> if you go and watch the Rock's Instagram, he posted the Rock did or his team it doesn't matter. It's still the Rock's profile some of the reactions from fans over WrestleMania weekend. And part of the reactions was from the botch guy. So pretty damn cool, pretty damn cool. And I encourage you to guys go give him a follow and a subscribe over on YouTube. All right. So let's get to some patrons and let's talk to Sharon. It's been a while. He says, Sharon from Israel. Hi, Matt. How are you? Did uh, you hear that we're in the triple H Paul Levesque era? Just in case you didn't notice, I, I didn't notice. I wasn't sure what era we're in, but WWE has made sure to tell us what we're in. So I had so much fun from your mailbag last week, hearing you, hearing your Rocky mock, trying to understand how to fight a dog if Becky Lynch loves Christmas, and uh, your half-hour conversation about Rhea's clothes, keep doing it. I don't remember some of those topics. I mean, I remember ranting about Rhea and her, her clothing that I know a lot of you are thinking I'm trying to bring women back into the 1800s and uh, create this mythical world of the handmaid's tale that by the way, never existed ever in the history of humanity. But some of you think I'm trying to bring women back to that. So if you think that fine, <laughs> it's not true. I'm actually a massive advocate of how far the women have come and I don't want to see them go back, but some people hear the opposite message and, and that's, I guess what you hear. Thank you though. It's day 1330 of Roman reigns. All hail the tribal chief. Well, uh, 1330 of, Roman being the tribal chief. Well, no, it wouldn't even be that. It would have been day 1330, but he ended at day 1316. Okay. I loved how Roman won. Cody, uh, how Roman won Cody in WrestleMania with a spear and Simone Spike on Cody after I turned it off because Roman always wins. Well, yeah, you, you shouldn't have turned it off because Roman didn't win, but... A little bit weird, they gave Cody the uh, replica belt, the pity replica belt, calling it the WWE Undisputed Championship. It's okay that the crybabies won't cry more. By the way, I'll be happy to do a special episode with you about Roman's reign. So if Iran won't bomb my country again, let's do it. <laughs> Finally, so happy to see Sammy get his ass kicked in the words of Gable. Thank you. Yeah, Sammy Zayn, obviously, with the, some of the comments about Israel, is, is, you know, it's, it's not good. Especially if you're from Israel, but man, you guys can't get your break over there. I mean, geez, you, every time you turn around, you guys got somebody attacking you. Well, what did you guys do that's so horrendous? I think it's just the sin of existing, right? From what I understand, a lot of uh, folks don't believe you guys should even exist as your own state. I think that kind of is at the heart of the whole thing. 
So I, yeah, just the the sin of existing. Boy, that's that's a really very weak reason and and a very uh, just awful reason to to really attack somebody is because they just exist. But another topic for another day. But thanks, Sharon. Okay. Let's continue to more patrons, and uh, we've got Matthew Brown, and he says, Hey, with Rhea getting hurt, what do you do with the Women's World Championship? And who do you think should be the next champ? Losing Rhea is a huge blow, and hopefully she isn't out too long. Thanks for your time, and have a good rest of your week. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think you have a tournament, a tournament that concludes, or a a uh, very, very quick turnaround tournament that concludes at Backlash. They got to put this together quickly. There's not a whole lot of time to build. So maybe they have, even if it's not a tournament, a formal tournament, you have just like two fatal four ways or something for the women or one fatal five way. And the winner, uh, you know, you know, you'd have to have two because there's no actual champion. You have to have two triple threats or two fatal four ways. The women, the winner goes to uh, uh, Backlash and the uh, winners of two both go to Backlash. As far as who should win, I mean, there's Becky Lynch, who is a obvious candidate, but I don't know how long she's going to be out. I don't think there were plans for her to come back. I know her and Seth and and Gunther and Roman, among others, have kind of taken a hiatus after WrestleMania, and that's a good thing. I actually wouldn't make Becky Lynch champion. I really wouldn't. To be fair, I think Nia Jax, this sounds crazy coming from me, who is still has hesitations about Nia Jax, but I've also respected her work and how far she's come and how much she helped build the women towards WrestleMania. I think Nia Jax might be a front runner. And I know that doesn't sound like me, but I think given what I've seen, I think it's a, it'd be a fun run. I think it would be a lot of fun or Chelsea Green. But here's the thing with Chelsea Green. I've heard that name. I love Chelsea Green as much as the next person. She's got a great gimmick. But I don't want a champion that's kind of a mock of a champion. I understand it'd be fun for a little while, but you know how quickly she gets beaten, and it would just be, you know, how long can she hang on? How many times can she lock out, right? It doesn't feel legitimate. So, all right, thanks. Let's get to DJ Kuzmo. He says, hey, AEW and WWE Podcast World, I'm back at it again at your mailbag show. Before I get to a list of who will go to SmackDown and who will go to Raw with the draft, I just want to mention quickly Liv's actions and Chad Gable's actions on their opponents. That absolutely makes sense. First, Chad Gable attacking Sammy after the match made sense because of the continued downward spiral of his character. After a series of tough losses, especially the gauntlet match, taking a page out of the Drew McIntyre heel playbook, Creative did a great job in positioning Chad to switch roles from heel to face, or rather face to heel. Now to Liv, who got revenge on Rhea after what Rhea did to her last year, costing Liv to be out of action for several months. Interesting to note that this feud between Rhea and Liv goes all the way back to 2022 when they were a tag team. And then after failing to win the women's tag titles at WrestleMania 38, Rhea turned on Liv and attacked her. Interesting to see how long Rhea will be away because there's a lot of history between her and Liv. That creative can use to build up a really good grudge match which doesn't have to be centered around a championship. I'm all for grudge matches in the women's division. Everything seems to always have to be about a title, which is why I always I, I continue to advocate for a not for, for WWE to not implement a mid-card title like a, a US or intercontinental equivalent for the women yet. Because I'd like to see the women compete with one another and have a grudge match outside of just fighting over a championship. So that's per, my personal preference. But I also appreciate DJ you bringing up the history that I had forgotten. With Rhea and Liv, that goes back to WrestleMania 38, and then Liv getting injured and from Rhea, now Rhea injuring Liv, or Liv, Liv injuring Rhea, rather. So they should hopefully pull from that. That's something I don't know if they've even realized they've got. But it'd be a great way to bring up a you know that fact in their video packages. So, yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So from SmackDown to Raw, this is who you have. LA Knight, pretty deadly. Randy Orton, Braun Breaker, Charlotte Flair, and a bonus is Sheamus. Even though he returned to Raw, he's currently listed on SmackDown. And from Raw to SmackDown, you have Dirty Dom, Becky Lynch, Seth Rollins, the Creed Brothers, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Bonus, the end of Sheer, because the change of scenery could make a difference. But 
DJ, I would let's just make sure they don't get fired first. <laughs> I mean, low bar, but let's make sure they don't get fired first before we have them in any kind of draft. But I would agree. A change of scenery could make all the difference. And to help maybe encourage you that they're not going to get fired, the tag team championships have now been split again. It means there are more teams to compete for a championship. And the end of share could absolutely fit on really either show. Why they are being used consistently is, is beyond me. They have shown every time they're on TV, especially with Jinder Mahal, who had a quick flash in the pan at a championship, they showed uh, promise. And I, I don't know what's happening. But all right, DJ Kuzma signing off. Have a great weekend. See you all in the Discord chat for SmackDown. Very good, DJ. Thank you. Another patron, Dino. This is Dino from Scotland. He, and uh, this is actually D Star. That's what it is. D or Star D Star. Uh, okay, Star D Star. Got it. Who recently upgraded to the Monday Night Raw? So yeah, there you go. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, change the name to Dino. Whatever you prefer. So I've so far I've got three names for you. I can call you just Dino. I'll call you Dino from Scotland. I can call you Star D Star. I, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> just just pick one and land on it. I guess. Whatever. It's it's up to you. By the way, I don't really uh, bother with my faction on 2K either. I just thought I'd take advantage of all the stuff that came with 40 years of WrestleMania edition because why not, right? Yeah, I have not dipped into the 2K24 game yet. Not because I don't want to or I don't love video games. I do. But at 39 years old now, two kids, house, cleaning, house projects. I work a full-time job. I have this podcast, uh, you know... It, by the time the night comes, which is what I'm doing now, I mean, I don't want to do anything, right? Even video games seem like a, a task. I just want to lay in bed and like veg out to Rick and Morty or something. Like, I, Which, by the way, guys, if you haven't seen Rick and Morty, it sounds like a stupid show, may look like a stupid show, but it's the smartest dumb show you'll ever watch. I don't know how else to describe it. It is a perfect just zone the F out show, but also not one that's just stupid. It actually has some uh, intelligence to it. So check it out. I really re you know, recommend that you do, or maybe you hate the show. I don't, I don't know. But if you haven't seen it, it's a great nighttime show. But either way, I just haven't had the time or really the motivation to say, oh man, I get video games tonight because I'm so damn tired by the end of the day. But hey, I, my, I will eventually get it. Anyway, I have a suggestion for the show. How about a mailbag after dark where people can send in emails for things unrelated to wrestling and or things related to wrestling that's slightly off topic like the whole Rhea Ripley thing. There's also one or two emails I refrain from sending you in reply to various previous stuff you spoke about and featured because it's not really suitable for a wrestling podcast. All the listeners would have to do is put Patreon after dark in the subject. It'll be easier for you to decipher what email for the regular mailbag is and what it is for the dark mailbag. Ooh, you know, I have to say... Dino, you, know, you may be onto something. I am intrigued by this idea. I think it's a really good idea, actually. At first glance, I like it. Uh, my instincts tell me this is a really good idea. Uh, some of the drawbacks, because I'm a very just kind of I'm a very I guess realist. Is that, is that what they call us? You know. Number one. The reason, one of the reasons this may be difficult is simply time. I mean, you, you see me struggle at the end of the week to get the mailbag out on time, which has very been, been very rare lately. And getting into multiple parts, I haven't got to everyone's emails. Voicemails haven't happened in a week or two, right? So I'm struggling to get just the regular content out, much less do another show. But if I could somehow, if I could somehow uh, split it, and it's not some not be able to commit more time because I don't know if I have any, any more time to commit to to the podcast. I don't. I really don't. Then I'll be able to do it. Like in other words, if I instead of doing two parts to a mailbag, I just do one part. It's an hour. What I get to is what I get to, and if I don't get to you, I don't get to you. You know, especially for those that aren't patrons. But the dark mailbag could just be where part two usually picked up, and that way I'm not recording anymore. It's just replacing part two of a typical mailbag. It's a thought. But yeah, I mean, a lot of stuff I talk about is not wrestling related when I do have the after dark stuff. And I'm sure that, yeah, if you, if you put it in, I wouldn't talk about that in this mailbag. You're right. Because the after dark stuff is meant for the, uh, the pay, you know, people behind the paywall. But I like it, Dino. Just stay tuned. Don't send anything in yet. 
but let me figure out the details and logistics of how we might be able to make this happen. Okay. I like it. I like it. Okay. Quick point on Michael Cole. In my opinion, he's the greatest of all time, certainly in my lifetime. And that would include JR. But I feel like Cole just edges it for me. The man is the goat. He's fantastic all around. And I feel like once Michael Cole retires, he can't be replaced, or at least it'll be very hard to replace him. There will, for me anyway, undoubtedly feel like there's a gaping hole in a product that he's gone, but hopefully is many, many years away. Remember, this is just my opinion. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, people always have to remember that opinions are what everyone has. And if you did, people often mix up opinion and fact, right? Would they say what I say or what you say or what anyone says in the show or in life is people most of the time are just opinions. And if you didn't believe they were true, you wouldn't say them, right? But you have to remember it's also an opinion. I don't know why I'm saying that. I would agree with you that Michael Cole is one of the goats. And it's clear also that Corey Graves is being groomed to be the heir apparent. Even Michael Cole said that on air, that Corey Graves is the heir apparent. So when Cole leaves, whether he retires or dies, God forbid, Corey Graves would step right in. And Corey Graves has already done some shows by himself taking the place of Cole, I think on SmackDown or uh, you know other shows. So Corey Graves is more than capable of it. And I, I really like Corey Graves on commentary. Pat McAfee is the color, right? As I say, the color commentator. He's the one that adds the flavor and the energy where Corey Graves is more of the guy that steers the ship and uh, navigates things. But yeah, Michael Cole, I, I don't think to me he's not better than Jim Ross. Jim Ross is the greatest announcer of all time in my mind. But I think Cole has really, really solidified himself in the uh, the annals of greatest ring announcer, or rather uh, ring uh, wrestling commentators of all time. No doubt. Thanks, Dino, and uh, stay tuned. All right, let's get to another patron, Freeman. Hi, Matt. I took a week off last week because I thought you'd be swamped, but I'm back again. Hope you missed me. Oh, I did, Freeman. In fact, most of the week last week, I was hiding it for from my friends and my family and actually you guys. I had to really, really try to hide it on air. I was weeping uncontrollably in between shows, and um, I had to take actually a couple days off work. Friends were asking me what's wrong. I had my 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 uh, my wife, you know, say, "Are you okay? You're gonna make it through the day." And I, I just was sobbing uncontrollably. My head isn't was in my hands and going through boxes of tissues. So Freeman, thank God you're back. You know, thank you so much. <laughs> um, I think we need to remember how much of a good move Legado del Fantasma has been for Santos. His character has truly come into his own. I think we need reminding of how bland and stale he was before and how much this is moving away from the LWO has done for him. It has, absolutely. But I would also argue they kind of cooled him off. Didn't he just lose a match clean last week? You know, he also needs more mic time. Santos, to me, I totally agree, is more relevant, infinitely more interesting when he's... Uh, not in it was that bland version of himself, but I, he but he and WWE need to figure out how to move forward here. They've got something. Now they need to figure out what to do with it to progress it. And if Ricochet wants to start an argument, just point to Santos and say that's how his character that's how character work is done and what it can do for a wrestler. Santos went from bland babyface to extremely entertaining very quick. Not saying Ricochet should turn heel, but maybe I am. Ricochet has zero uh, character development, and for some reason, he cannot grasp that and thinks that everything should just be a highlight reel. And and hey, it, you know what? If I was in his shoes, and I know the company isn't going to give me any mic time, and I've only got one card to play, then I would probably focus on being the highlight of the show and doing you know 450 splashes off of the ring apron onto the announce table. Like, yeah, fine. I mean, I, that's what I would do too to get myself attention. But I'd also recognize that I am a one-dimensional character. Now, if he doesn't see that and thinks that he should be praised more for what he does, and that he feels he should be higher on the card based on what he's done, what he's done, uh, the answer is no, Ricochet. The answer is a solid no. You are very good in the ring from an athletic standpoint. You are a 
a, a gymnast combined with a stunt man. And you can do things in the ring that a lot of other people can't. But here's what you, what a lot of people have that you don't. Uh, emotional connection with the audience. See, that's the part that he's missing. If, if he truly doesn't understand that, I don't know how he's gotten to where he is. But I don't know. Maybe a heel turn for Ricochet would be the best thing. But right now, I think he's just... You, know, you even watch him on Twitter, and, and he just he acts like a child on Twitter or X. He acts like a child. I mean, go go out, look at some of his tweets battling with fans. He just seems like a bitter dude. He just feels probably like he's deserving of more because he can do more things in the ring, not recognizing that what you do in the ring is not nearly as important as what you do on the microphone and how you conduct yourself with fans. I mean, the, he just... He, I'm sorry, sorry, but he just seems like a big child. All right. Um, the whole LWO keeps growing, however, and now seems basically anyone can become a member as long as they're willing to put over Ray. That guy is such a deadbeat dad. He refused to even give his own son the rub at WrestleMania. Instead, of giving it to complete nobodies, giving it to two complete nobodies nobody cared about, which annoyed me more than I care to admit. No, I, I, I absolutely think Dom should have won. Why Ray's team won made no sense. Ray already beat his son last year, so in the tag match, at least gives his son's team the victory. They gained nothing from having Don lose. Don? Don. My God. Yeah, Don. Dom loses way too much. Even though the crowd still boos him out of the building, and you could argue, well, they're still reacting the way they are, but... It could be even better if he never loses and sneaks out victories, cheats to win, mouths off about it. He gets his ass kicked way too much. All right, let's continue. Um, but uh, no, as far as the LWO, yeah, there's too many people. It feels like the NWO a little bit from you know, back in the day when it got watered down. I would say let's cool it on people joining. I would agree, yes. Also, if you want to know who attacked Dragon Lee, why don't they just ask him? He was stood right next to them when they were discussing it on SmackDown, but I suppose it's easy to get lost in the crowd. That group is too big. Yeah, it's very logical. <laughs> just to ask him. Oh, God. Yeah, no. Um, with the draft coming, near any, everyone is talking about who will be moved, but I think they'll use this as a time to prune some of the roster as well as to make it make some space for the NXT to move up. Do you think anyone will be released from their contracts? Dexter Loomis as well as Nikki Cross seem like strong possibilities, but I'm hoping the LWO gets pruned down from its 5,000 members. Well, I mean, who are you pruning from LWO? Like Dragon Lee? I, I don't think they're doing that. He seems to be a bit of a focal point for up and, up and coming star. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I would I would agree Dexter Loomis and Nikki Cross are probably on the chopping block. I would be very concerned about the end of Sheer. Um, maybe even Jinder Mahal from being on the chopping block. But it is a very cyclical thing right around WrestleMania, right after WrestleMania, that they do this uh, this trimming, as you call it, right? It's, uh, it's If I was on the roster and I haven't been used in several months, I'd be a bit... I'd be a bit on the edge of my seat. All right, Freeman. Thank you. Let's go to Charlie from Milwaukee. He says, Matt, you gave us homework last week to make early predictions for WrestleMania 41. Ooh, okay. You actually got your homework assignment in on time. Good job, Charlie. Okay. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens for the Intercontinental Championship. Wow. So you think Sami's going to keep it that long? Okay. I mean, it's not crazy. Number two, Creed Brothers versus DIY for the undisputed tag team titles. Well, you got to just tell me which one because is it the world or the you're saying all oh, the undisputed? OK, yeah, that's plausible. Gunther versus Brock. I would agree. That's a WrestleMania worthy match. Cody versus Seth for the undisputed WWE championship in a 60 minute Iron Man match. I would say yes, but no 60 minute Iron Man match. They're not going to dedicate an hour to that. You know, each night is four hours. They're not going to dedicate one of the nights with 25% of that night being one match. But 
I think Cody versus Seth could absolutely happen next year. I don't want Rock Cody at wrestling WrestleMania next year. It would be great as if I went to a had WrestleMania season without actually knowing ahead of time a year in advance who Cody's going to face. That'd be great. It'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk and Hell in a Cell for the world title. I would say yes, except it feels like they wouldn't be able to string that that far. Like Punk is slated to come back, you know, June ish from his injury at the earliest. And that means like what are they gonna do? Build from Drew and uh Punk from June to Mania? I mean, like that's that's impossible. I mean that's not impossible, but very unlikely unless they have like one match and then they both go off on their separate paths and then reconnect at the end of the year. LA Knight versus MJF versus Kenny Omega for the United States Championship. Wow. All right. Love it. But do I think it's realistic? Probably not. I, as much as I want MJF in WWE, AEW is learning what an MJF list company looks like and they're surviving. But I don't believe that MJF has re- has signed with WWE. It's my understanding he has quietly re-signed with AEW. And if I was Tony Khan, I would give the dude anything I want, anything he wants, as many zeros as it takes on the check to sign him. And I think that's probably what has happened. Now, is it possible that WWE snuck in at the last second and blew him away with an offer? It's possible, but unlikely. Karrion Cross versus Aleister Black. I like that. John Cena versus Randy Orton. I do like that in a farewell John Cena match. I think that's very appropriate. Bianca Belair versus Rhea Ripley. Hallelujah. Yes, Charlie. Yes. For the Women's World Heavyweight Championship in the main event of night one. Yes. Please. That's a match we've been waiting for for years now. Number 10. Roman Reigns versus The Rock in a head of the table match to main event night two with Stone Cold Steve Austin as the special guest referee. Ooh. Yes. Bring in Austin like right away. Don't even you know, don't even uh, tease that he might come in. He might you know do what he was supposed to do this year because it didn't happen. Him as the as the referee would be a lot of fun because guess who's going to eat some stunners at the end? Probably both of them. I just have suddenly a very big craving to see the Rock get stunned again because it was burned in my brain for like six months that it was going to happen. And then Austin decided he wasn't getting enough money and respect from the company and said no. Also, Hall of Fame, Miss Elizabeth, Lex Luger, Batista, and ooh, this ain't going to happen, but you're saying Chris Benoit in the Hall of Fame. Please feel free to grade my predictions. Happy 420. (laughs) Hashtag Cody's dog sucks. I will hashtag that until infinity, Charlie. You know what? And here's what I, I've gotten comments from people. Just oh, don't hate on the dog. Leave the dog alone. Okay. Um, first and foremost, even if I was specifically targeting the dog, do you think the dog is listening to this show and getting his feelings hurt? The answer is, of course not. I would hope that's your answer. So even if I was calling out an animal that can't understand what I'm saying, th- yeah, you know, then I don't I mean, that's not happening. But even if it was, then you are not even at a room temperature IQ. Not you, Charlie, but those of you who think I'm targeting a dog that can't even understand what I'm saying. Secondly, I'm not targeting the dog. I'm targeting Cody being a tool and looking like a tool for bringing his dog again. Next, I wouldn't be surprised if they bring him with a man purse and have Chihuahua in his bag next week. You know, coming off his bus, smiling at everything and everyone all the time, and bringing a little Chihuahua in his purse next week. It, it Would it not fit Cody's character? He's bringing his stupid dog, and it's only stupid dog because it makes Cody look stupid. That's why. <laughs> I know I'm resorting, resorting to, like, you know, 15-year-old insults here, but that's how I feel about it. So I'm not targeting the dog himself. The dog can't understand what I'm saying. I'm targeting Cody and the creative around bringing his dog and his handkerchief and all that nonsense. All right. But uh, as far as Chris Benoit, no, man. They'll never induct him. Never. They can't. They can't. And it sucks 
because if you are if you can separate the two uh you know he Chris Benoit had one of the best wrestling careers in history and he was one of the best technical wrestlers one of the hardest workers in the company both when he was in WCW and in WWE um it just he has done something so horrific that you can't separate the two you just can't do it it it'll never happen never and I, I don't say that lightly because a lot of times, oh, they'll come around. Oh, this person comes around. Yeah, that's like usually personal beef, right? Personal beef like Ultimate Warrior had with the company forever, and they finally make, made amends. Hulk Hogan made amends. Bruno San Martino that trashed the WWE forever eventually made amends and came around. That's different. That's personal beef. That's schoolyard stuff. When you murder your family and kill yourself, it ain't happening. It's just not happening. So, uh, unfortunately, it's it's not going to happen. But Lex Luger, Miss Elizabeth, and Batista, sure. All right, let's go to another patron, Hungry Pup. He says, I'm sure by this point your show, you've already professed your love for the undisputed, our undisputed WWE champion. I get it. He's just not for you. So with that said, I wanted to mix things up and highlight the very few things right now that are not for me. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay, let's go. The new stage. The screen is small. The smallness makes feel everything feel less. Less lights, less effects, less immersive, less fun. Yeah, but I have to ask, though, you know, it's kind of, isn't it more of an intimate setting? The fans and the stars are more integrated, though. I mean, I'm, here's the thing. I know I'm not going to convince you. I'm not, I'm not going to change your mind. But maybe just look at it from this perspective. WWE is trying to make more money. That's their goal. Nothing wrong with that. I think it's what most for-profit organizations are targeting. Make more money. I know that sounds evil, but that's their goal. Uh, So they're trying to make more money. I don't know if it makes everything feel less, because here, listen to the crowd. Crowds are loud as hell right now. I would argue that kind of stuff is superficial. If you go back to even the mid-90s, even the late 90s, before they come up with the big ass Tron and all that and the special LED boards, wrestling, even at that point, just had a curtain you would go through. No special effects, no you know uh, AI animation, none of that, and it was still awesome. You go back to when wrestling was very successful in the eighties, even the seventies, smoke filled arenas. No special effects. In some cases, no music. And wrestling still kicked ass and sold out. So what's making it successful? Is it the LED boards? Is it the special effects? Is it the AI? Or maybe it's the emotional connection that fans have with talent. That will and will forever be what makes wrestling successful. Sure, it can be a more fun experience to the brain right to to the eyes it looks more quote unquote professional it doesn't look so you know bush league but if you care about who wins and loses eventually those things don't matter usually we see bigger better brighter more technologically advanced and it says it seems like wwe over the last several weeks has taken the opposite approach from a visual perspective, but also they know that they, they're still selling out. They're doing something right. So I, I totally understand what you're saying. It, I don't know if it's less immersive, but wh- whatever they're doing is working. All right, Jey Uso. He's repetitive, to say the least. Every aspect of his character, from repeating the same arm swings and music in his entrance to repeating the same, sup- the same move, the super kick, and even repeating the same corny word, yeet. At least his finish isn't repeating a generic spear or anything. <laughs> it, here's the thing. Yeah, Jey Uso, he, he's, still, he's still main eventing Raws, though. I mean, he's still in a really good place. Outside of the WrestleMania match that was horrific with his brother, which I hope they pretend never happened, and they never revisit. He, While he's not really evolving he still continues to get big reactions. And ultimately, that's the measuring stick. He is a bit repetitive. A lot of guys are very repetitive in their catchphrases, though. 
Jay, uh, what, you know, we'll see what they do with him after his brother's program, where they go with him. He has a world title match, for God's sake, so something's working. And I hate the super kick with a passion now, I would agree. It is a, it has gone from super annoying to I despise it. That's how much I ha- what the what the uh, Usos have done with the super kick. They have made me despise it. So Pete Dunn, I mean, nothing says uh, excitement like a guy that trudges to the ring, snarling and bending fingers, all while never abandoning his cardboard facial expression. I, you know, I would agree. The guy is not interesting. I remember somebody else wrote in about his, you know, his, the, the issue he, they have with. The twisting and manipulation of fingers it is, it is weird. It's not it, it's not exciting. He doesn't get you excited. So I don't know what you do with this character. He does feel like El Generico, does he not? He does. But he's also technically sound. He does have something there. I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, when they had Butch, he was the rabid dog. Uh, they were clearly mimicking a rabid dog that needed to be caged. That's the way Vince McMahon saw him. Then he returned to Pete Dune, uh, you know, which is probably the best thing that's ever happened to him with Pretty Deadly rebranding him as Pete Dune, which is hilarious. So I, I just, I, I don't know what it is. The figure manipulation is, to me, it's it's okay. I, I, I don't know. But he is, he is a little bit, a little bit El Generico. Nia Jax, there are two types of people in this world, those who squash and those who get squashed. Hungry Pup. Oh, thanks, Hungry Pup. And I, I just advocated for Nia Jax to win the women's world title. So we'll see what happens. All right. Let's talk to another patron. This is Liv in... Wait, oh, no, no, no. This is... Who is this? I don't know. Hold on a second. Oh, oh I see who it is. Okay, because I, I, I read the name of the email, the subject. Okay. This is Mo. Like Mo from Simpsons, but my surname is pronounced Carmis. Got it. Okay. What is your opinion on AEW airing the CM Punk incident? I feel like it was a a, a petty move. It has nothing to. Uh, I feel it was a petty move. It has done nothing for them or Jack Perry himself. Yeah, I don't think it has done much for anybody. It, it does feel a little bit lowbrow to do that. Uh, you know, I, I think it's just to. I don't know if it's a personal shot at at, at, at uh, Punk or if it's a um, just to cover themselves. I'm not sure what the reasons were for the the motivations were behind that. I don't really have strong feelings about it. It's just I know a lot of people uh, uh, f Punk all this. I, I don't really care, right? I care what he does now when he's here. But you know, uh, Jack Perry and Punk, it just it's done nothing for anyone. It has served no purpose for anyone, or nor has it helped anyone. One last thing. Can you rank these women in order of in-ring ability? In your opinion, number one being the top spot. Okay, so you have Eva Marie, Lana, and Maxine Dupree. <laughs> Boy, you you gave me the cream of the crop here. Okay. I would say number three is probably, oh boy, Lana. Lana's not good. Not good. I would say number two is Eva Marie, and believe it or not, number one would be Maxine Dupree. Now, again, these are only the ranking out of these three women, not overall, of course. But Lana just was horrible. I mean, she just was she was bad. Great look, very good looking woman. She, you know, you're hoping she had potential, but she just never cut it in the ring. And hey, it's not easy. I'm not saying she was it was embarrassing. It was just she tried, and it just didn't work out. Um, from what I understand, though, didn't, didn't Lana and uh, Rusev get a separation or divorce or something? Something's weird going on there. All right. So, all right, Mo. Thank you. Let's talk to let's talk to Mrs. Rocky T. And she says, it's been a long time since I've sent an email. First off, I cried when Rhea announced her vacating their belt, but I do believe she'll come back stronger. Yeah, it was emotional. And I know a lot of people loved her reign and she just got going. But as I've said, and I said last night on the Raw review, 
I think this could really set her career on fire. And I don't mean in a dumpster fire way. I mean in a a blaze of fire. Like when she comes back, the crowd's going to lose it. She's already a beloved baby face that never really got a proper baby face push. When she comes back, it's all systems go. There's no more playing around with her character. Well, she's a heel, but we know she gets cheered. No, no. When she comes back, it's going to be an explosion. So I can't wait, which is why I believe whoever wins is going to be a heel champion so that Rhea can come back and take down the heel champion and reclaim her belt. So look for a heel to win the, her, her, uh, her championship. It's sad that Roman hardly defended his belt and never had to vacate or with Seth's injuries, he was able to keep his title. If they had only some way to let her keep her title, who do you think will become the women's new women's world champ? You think it's too soon for Jade? Oh, way too soon for Jade. Jade can't do more than three moves a match, and I mean that seriously. Last week, she had three moves in the match. Three. One of them she botched. She's got a million-dollar look, but she could have an ultimate warrior complex where you've got everything from a physical standpoint optically, but when it comes to in-ring and when it comes to putting a good match on, it's a womp, 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 right? I'm not saying it for sure, but they're clearly being very careful of not exposing her weaknesses, which to them seem to be any match longer than 45 seconds. So yeah, way too soon for Jade. I still think Nia Jax could win. I would advocate, actually, believe it or not, for Nia Jax to win because I think that's the best setup for when she when uh, Rhea Ripley returns. Also, th- I-, I think that they probably were hoping there was a way that they could get around this. With Seth, Seth had an injury. Roman basically had an injury schedule without actually being injured. Like as I've said throughout his run for four years, especially towards the end, more towards the end, the last year and a half, with how few times he was there you'd never know if he was injured because that's how an injured champion would build his schedule it's almost like he anticipated injuries so he even if he did it wouldn't matter because he doesn't have to wrestle for the next three months right so we never knew whether roman was injured or not but with Rhea, there must be a more serious injury here i'm sure they thought well if it was just a month or a month and a half maybe even two months we could get through it it's mul- it's got to be three four or five months that she's gone and you just, you just, no way you can do it. You can't have her just sit on the title and not defend it for more than, you know, a couple, a month or two at the very most. So this must have been a pretty significant injury. I'm not over Cody winning. You're still not. Now, when he comes on TV, I'm quick, I'm quickly going to mute or fast forward his segment. What are your thoughts on the bloodline turning on Jimmy? I think that it's an interesting, uh, interesting chapter it's a new chapter in the the ever going the ever uh ever standing bloodline story that just doesn't end and i'm not complaining it's just unbelievably long and i don't think we're actually even close to it being done because hey think about this even after all their chapters of the heel tamatanga and jimmy and jay like all these things we've seen we haven't seen a baby face run with the bloodline so when that happens that's a whole new book it's not even a new chapter. It's a new book. So the bloodline story in the next three, three, the three years from now, we could still be talking about the bloodline. I'm not kidding. A much different version, a baby face version and whatnot. But I like the fact that Jimmy was ousted because Jimmy as this kind of fourth, fifth, sixth wheel in the group that didn't have anything going on for him. And then he has a stinker of a match at WrestleMania. He was in a bad spot, uh, kind of an irrelevant spot. It was time for him to change that. Him being ousted was the best thing that could have happened for his career. He was going nowhere and nowhere fast. So Tama Tonga comes in. Jimmy now is immediately a baby face, which I think is much better suited to be. Jay can eventually come around to help his brother again. There's a reuniting there. And then what does Roman do when he comes back? Does he Roman turn babyface? Does he side with Tama Tonga and uh, Solo? Does he decide to side with Jimmy and Jay? There's a lot you can do here, folks. A lot. I don't mean folks as in you, Kim. I mean, just generally the people listening. All right. Uh, Let's see. Do you think Jimmy and Jay will tag team together? Well, I think I just answered that. I think, yes, Jimmy and Jay are going to tag together because clearly as opponents, they are 
<laughs> like really bad. I really like solo, uh, the, the road solo. Uh, the, I like the solo road. Oh, I get it. I don't, you didn't mean solo Sokoa. You meant the solo road Jay is on. Got it. It amazes me how much everyone likes him and dances to his song. You can see almost everyone throwing their hands up and down. Thoughts about the new world tag team belts. I like it. New, uh, nice belts, but not a fan of the red lettering. Well, it's better than the other belts with the red belts. I mean, they have to have some kind of cohesion, symmetry among all their championships. Similarly looking. I ha- I don't mind that they have a similar vibe to them. I, d- I really don't hate it that much. I, in f- I think it's a visual improvement. And it's cohesive. You have the Women's World Championship, the Women's WWE Championship. You have the WWE Undisputed Championship, and you have the world title on the men's side. You know, you have IC and US as the, their respective counterparts. Now you have the world uh, tag team titles and the WWE tag team titles. But as I said last night, the irony is that the W, the first W in WWE stands for world. So the WWE title is also the world title, right? Whatever, right? I think I'm getting a little too much into it, but thank you, Mrs. Rocky T. Good to hear from you. All right, where do we go? I don't know. Uh, let's let's see if we can get a voicemail on here. Do I dare get to a voicemail? It's been too long. Let's see if I can get to one. What's going? podcast world this is dj kuzmo back at it again on your mailbag show record to you live on a wednesday morning on a very beautiful sunny wednesday morning and before we get to the veer mahan report before we get to the veer mahan report i know not i know that this is not an aw dynamite report but i just want to i just want to get this off my chest about what happened the absolute debacle of what i saw last week on dynamite with the fact that you had the footage that Tony Khan authorized the footage of the all in backstage, you know, stuff that was going on with CM Punk and Jack Perry, aka Jungle Boy, just to help promote the FTR versus the Young Bucks for AEW's Dynasty this coming Sunday. It makes absolutely no sense. CM Punk is no longer in AEW. Jack Perry is in Japan. What was the point of putting this video out there? And now it seems like AEW wants to, you know, find everything in its power to delete that video but once it's out there on the internet it's out there permanently so there was just an absolute debacle i don't want to curse but it was an absolute debacle of what happened with this footage of what happened backstage between cm punk you know the young bucks are still petty 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 evps to have this i guess harsh feelings to cm punk and for anybody else that was involved backstage i don't want to talk about this because you know this is not an AEW report. Now let's get to your favorite show to come on every single week on the mailbag. And I'm talking about the fear, the fear, the fear, the fear, the fear, the fear. Mahad Report. Now the Veer Mahad Report took place this past Monday night on Monday Night Raw live from Montreal, Canada. You know, the hometown of none other than the Intercontinental Champion, Sami Zayn. And we did not, once again, we did not get an appearance of the end this year. We're just a couple of days away from this all-important, that's right, the all-important WWE Draft. Where will the end this year land? On SmackDown? On NXT? Still on Raw? Or maybe they may get released. Whatever is the, whatever the case may be, my fingers are crossed, like I said last week, my fingers are crossed as to the whereabouts and the future of my guys, Afir Mahad, Saga, and the modern day Maharaja Jinder Mahal. So with that being said, this is your guy, DJ Kuzmo. Be kind to one another. See you see my friends, and peace. Hey, DJ, well, I, where I think they should land is employed. That's their first place. That's their first goal. That's their first destination. Land a job. <laughs> yeah, before we start worrying about what brand in, in the shears on, let's make sure they're employed. <laughs> okay. But I mean, I'm being half serious. You now, like, let's hope they survive the cuts that usually come post mania. But though, as far as the footage being leaked, again, I don't think it helped anyone do anything. But what the attempt for that was is called attention. It's called getting people talking with WrestleMania sucking the life out of the wrestling world over the last week or two. 
AEW has to try to get some of their attention back, and they're going to try to do that any any means necessary and get eyeballs back on AEW's product and away from WWE. Tall task, but they're trying to, I think, do that with things like that. So it's called, look over here, guys. Look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. Look at this crazy thing I'm releasing for no reason. So I think that's what it is. Thanks, DJ. And let's get to this Bevan from Australia. Let's find out. Hey, Matt, Bevan from Australia here. On to my third coffee this morning. I had to watch uh, WrestleMania Sunday last night. I was at work and banned myself from all social media and watched it last night. Oh, WrestleMania Sunday was awesome. The first match was great. I loved it. I was I jumped out of my seat when um, Damien Priest cashed in. That was hectic. That was... Oh, I don't know. The blocks. I feel sorry for Drew, but gee whiz, I don't know. This is just going to add to his bitterness, which I love anyway. Uh, my one question is, obviously, Cody's won, and we're going to have a big makeout session on Raw in a few hours' time. Um, Kumbaya and all that stuff. And um, But my question is, he's going to be on Raw, but the Universal Undisputed um, Championship is on SmackDown. So I wonder if Cody's going to also be moving to SmackDown which means we could have another make-out session on Friday night. Because uh, I'm assuming that Damien Priest is based on Raw and so is that title. Else we're going to have uh, the Heavyweight Championship, the Universal Championship and the Intercontinental Championship all on Raw, which is going to leave SmackDown pretty empty. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, just wanted to say I I agree with what you said about Ricochet. Um but you, 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 mate, you, you just dealt to him, dude. You went full, full, uh, what did you do? You super kicked him, you, um, threw in a 950 splash, nailed him, and I guess the reason why, um, he hasn't responded is you probably put a sleeper hold on him right at the end with your last comment. So, boom, take that, ricochet. <laughs> I enjoyed that I was chuckling a lot, but I was like, go get him, Matt. You're the man. Enjoy your podcast, mate. And I've loved this last uh, few weeks with um, lead up to WrestleMania and all that. So um, always, always, always enjoyable. Take care, my friend. Speak again. Bye. Bevan, always good to hear from you, my friends. Hope all is well over there in Australia and you're getting enough sleep, <laughs> drinking that coffee. And Drew is – his. The bitterness, the more bitter Drew becomes, the better he becomes. I think that's a great adjective to use. Bitterness. <clears throat> subtle bitterness, but not even so subtle anymore. But the more things that happen to his character, the more negative things that happen to his character, the better he becomes. The more he gets screwed. The more Punk messes with him. it be, He just continues to get better. Drew is awesome right now. I love it. I love what he's doing. Now, yeah, the makeout fests are going to continue. Um, that said, there's a draft coming up in a couple weeks. We'll find out where he lands. Now, Cody, as I've said on this, I think I talked about this on my Raw review. Cody is going to, he's saying he's a SmackDown star, right? But people aren't, or the title, titles aren't drafted. People are. Cody was drafted to Raw the last draw, the last draft. Therefore, the title should stay on Raw until the draft happens, in which case everything always balances out. But they don't have titles drafted to shows. You draft people. So it was weird that he said he was a SmackDown star as if the title supersedes where he lands. Again, the WWE, the, the undisputed WWE Championship was not drafted to SmackDown. Roman was drafted to SmackDown, right? In the end, though, we know that Cody will probably be drafted to SmackDown officially. Damien will stay on Raw. I think that makes sense. LA Knight's probably coming to Raw. I think that'd be a great move for him. And we can speculate on the other moves coming up. And as far as Ricochet goes, I mean, I didn't even get to some of the stuff I wanted to say to him. He's just a tool bag on Twitter. He, I just talked about this only 15 minutes ago. He said he's like 12 year old dude. He's like a little 12 year old trapped in a 30 year old body. I mean, to some degree, all of us guys are. We mature very slowly, and sometimes we never mature at all. But if you're working for a multinational or a worldwide organization that pays you very well, why are you going to go on social media 
and battle with the people that are paying your salary. It just makes no sense. And then he feels entitled to a lot of things that he's not getting, but yet at the same time seemingly doesn't understand why he's not as successful as he feels like he should be. Because I can do cool stuff. I can do stuff nobody else can do. Uh, Okay, but can you connect with the crowd? Like, can you just cut a good promo? I think the closest he got was in the program with Logan Paul. So it took a YouTube star to bring him into somewhat relevance, and then he goes back to obscurity. Honestly, his girlfriend is more over than than he is. (laughs) I mean, just fact. People emotionally connect with his girlfriend more than him, and she's never even cut a promo. That's sad. But Samantha Irvin is awesome. I mean, she is. I've been singing her praises before it became cool to praise her. Anyway, thanks, Bevan. I hope all is well. Hey, what's going on, Matt? Uh, this is Kevin uh, calling from Oakland, California. Uh, big shout out to your podcast. Uh, big fan here. Uh, but man, what a what a crazy WrestleMania that we just went through, man. Uh, I mean, we got new champions. Uh, there was a whole a huge turnover in, in the in the whole company, and I'm uh, really excited to see what's going to happen, man. But um, but let's talk about this though. Uh, What's that? What's that first Roman Reigns entrance that we're gonna see uh, from WWE? I mean, he's not gonna be holding the title. Um, will Paul Heyman still walk beside him? Uh, I'm I'm thinking about this right now, you know. Uh, and another thing, um, with The Rock now seemingly forming his own bloodline, will we see a name change from his team or Roman's original bloodline? Um, curious to hear your thoughts, man. Uh, like I said, big fan of the show and, uh, keep up the great work, man. Take care. All right, Kevin from Oakland, California. Appreciate the compliments. The bloodline story is very interesting right now because we just saw the dawn of something new that's going to lead to something big, which could be the rock having his own bloodline, renaming it with Roman having his own. And with Jimmy and Jay likely to side with babyface Roman, heel rock could lead uh, the Tamatanga and uh, Solo Sokoa group. So you have three on three, a six man tag team match that could blow up at SummerSlam. You know, I think that's it's very possible with the rock siding with Solo and Tonga. And again, Roman siding with Jimmy and Jay. Now you have many steps to get to that point. You have a lot of chapters to tell. You have to reconcile Jimmy and Jay. You have to figure out how and why Roman is going to side with Jimmy and Jay and not Solo and Tamatanga. Paul Heyman has to figure out where his loyalties lie. And then you have to understand why, or we have to understand why, and WWE has to figure out why The Rock is coming back to defend Solo and Tamatanga and not his cousin, and why there's now friction between Rock and Roman. You know, there's got to be a lot that they need to do to get there. A lot of details to iron out. Not easy to do. But they could get there three on three. And then eventually lead to Rock Roman, which should be this year's WrestleMania. For the love of God, can we not put this away another year? How many years now? Like, this has been going on. Yes, this was supposed to happen this year with Cody, uh, you know, stepping aside and that whole thing that happened, which is one of the best things we've seen with the Rock character. But for the love of God, can we get to a Rock Roman match? Can we please get to one? I mean, this is I have I'm I'm very worried that the match actually will never happen. Not because WWE doesn't have plans or the Rock doesn't have intentions to do it, but because life happens, injuries happen, movie schedules change again, priorities change, family, Roman's health with his cancer. Yeah, things happen. Like I'm very worried with all the uh, the variables and the unknowns that we actually never get the match. <laughs> I just, I, I mean, after all this, de- all this debate and push back and forth and movie schedules that got changed and then the fans turned on The Rock and now Cody's the main event, not The Rock and Roman. I mean, how many more times before the universe says, yeah, this ain't going to happen? I mean, we may have to just stick to 2K24 to make it happen. Huh. All right. Thank you. And let's let's get another one or two in, and we'll call it a night. Hey, Matt. This is Brad in Florida. And um, 
just like a little rant, like, honestly, it feels like, I feel a little bad for Roman in a certain way. And I know, you know, in real life, he's probably a little, you know, relieved. He doesn't have to carry the burden of that title and all the things that come along with it, the appearances of this, being the face of the company, all of that for a little bit. It's a good thing for him. But, you know, just the way they came with this new intro, this new then now together forever, and they have now... Um, you know, everyone's talking about the new era, and this is a new era, and we're, we're, you know, the past is the past, and now we're on to the future. It almost felt like them getting rid of Roman's title reign was like the last piece of that puzzle, and they could finally move into that new era. And it's a little bit like, you know, you could say, oh, Roman was, you know, Vince loved Roman, but Triple H loves Roman too, and, you know, I think... You know, in a certain way, it was almost feeling to me like wiping Roman is the last thing we got to do to, like, get on with this new era. I, I don't know. I just didn't like it. Secondly, if we really want to go into a new era, we have to do something about the music. They have to get rid of this Def Rebel. They have to. Um, Def Rebel's had a few good ones. Roman's theme song being a good one. Um, Seth Rollins's being a good one. Uh, I, I think Carmelo Hayes, Trick Williams. But, like... That's honestly about it. Like, there's really not a lot. It, it just feels like generic theme song, AI-generated number 40, 482. You know what I mean? And they just pump it out and give it to whoever. You know what I mean? I just don't like the lack of recognizability with these theme songs. I don't like the lack of being able to, you know, just really have it hit the mark, like, a lot of the great theme songs, if you think about, like, Nakamura, Becky Lynch, even Kevin Owens for what his is, Sami Zayn, those are still CFO um, holdovers. You know what I mean? Like, it's all of these wrestlers. You name me a wrestler, Matt, who got over with a bad theme song, and I would, or an unrecognizable one. And I would argue with you, man, that Cody would not be who he is without the theme song that he has now. No way, no shape, no form. So... I know my time's running out. See you later. Um, but they got to get rid of this Def Rebel. they got to figure out a way to do new music. Um, bringing in independent bands, uh, whatever it is. Um, Jim Johnson back. I don't know if he, Johnson, whatever. I don't know if he wants to do it. But, yeah, there you go. Thanks, man. I didn't even think of that, Brad. I, I didn't even think about the fact that, that the theme song needs a bit of a reboot. It does seem very generic. At times it feels like they change it too much, though. Uh, but it's time again, and they need to figure out one that's not going to be a, another El Generico, one that has a standout vibe to it. And I know we all think back to the Attitude Era. I mean, think back to the Ruthless Aggression Era, Monday Night Raws, the iconic Raw intros. But the Raw theme does need a reboot. Here's the thing, though. With this new era being ushered in, they can't do everything all at once. And Triple H has said that, you know, like there are things that are much more of a priority to them, like figuring out who's going to be champion for the, uh, you know, for the, the be the face of the company with Cody being uh, anointed with Sami Zayn being anointed, taking down Gunther, you know, moving forward with Rhea Ripley and now not with Rhea Ripley. So they, they've they've got obviously more things to do. But yeah, sure. They have so many people they could probably assign. Hey, uh, hey, guys, I'm putting a committee together. Can, can you guys just you know, here's my digital group. Here's my marketing uh, you know, group. Can you guys come up with a great song? Send me some samples. I'll come up with, you know what I mean? So maybe they're in the process of it. But I would agree. It's it's the soundtrack to the show. You do want a, a kick-ass song. I would, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. And as far as Roman Reigns goes, I mean, yeah, here's the thing. As human beings, we want something until we get it, and then we, we, uh, we miss what we, did, what we had, right? So with Roman Reigns... With him not being champion, it does. The company has just a different feel to it. It has a different feel. It just does. And Roman, as as you've said, is probably sitting there taking a big exhale and going, oh, you know. But also probably mourning, you know, not mourning as in morning night, but mourning like as in kind of being a little bit sad that he's not champion anymore on a real personal level. You know, and, and I, I hope he takes as much time as he needs away. 
we're used to him not being here anyway, so no one's going to complain that he's not here because he's not here everywhere. You know, for his, he showed up like you know six times in the last uh, you know year. So Roman not being here is just par for the course. Except here's the thing: when people see Roman this time when he comes back, I think they're going to embrace him wholeheartedly. I think he's going to be a baby face unless they have plans to continue to make him a heel. And the fans aren't going to look at him and go, oh, he's just a reminder of every time he's here. It's just a reminder that he has, he's holding that title hostage. He doesn't have a title anymore. So there's no reason to be mad. You know? But uh, Cody Rhodes not being as successful, I think there's a there's an argument to be made there. Now we'll never know for sure. But entrance theme songs are so important. I mean, it helps Seth Rollins get over it. Like, where would Seth Rollins be on that same note without his whoa song, right? And then you have Cody Rhodes with the whoa in his song and it's a catchy theme and people love it. And his entrance is, it, it, it is infectious. Even if you don't like the character, it's still a very well polished, uh, very well polished entrance. It's very well done theater. And I think that you're right without that entrance music and his, I mean, I just, I don't know if Cody would be where he is. He'd be just another, uh, you know, heel wearing a suit maybe but we'll never know all right that'll do it for me tonight guys i know that if you didn't hear your voicemail you're like i didn't get to mine i see yours so let me just shout out to the people that i can tell sent us voicemails that i didn't get to but i will try uh the next time around here i see we've got the alex the french guy we will get to you okay um, we've also got New York Kyle. I know you sent us one. So, uh, in, in kind of cleaning up the, uh, mailbag, maybe I'll do a, a quick part two later in the week. We'll see if I have time on Friday. I work from home on Friday, so maybe I'll be able to clean up a, a very quick part two on the mailbag and, uh, get through some of the voicemails and any emails that come in between now and then. So if I didn't get to anything, guys, I apologize I'm trying to cram this into an hour and uh, make it manageable for myself and my life. So thank you, everybody, for listening. If you want to go ad-free and get yourself on the show, patrons got priority here, guys. And you can get yourself priority and ad-free everything at patreon.com slash WWE podcast. Great way to do it. Or Apple podcast. Go ad-free there. Both offer a one-week free trial. If you want to try it, use us for just an ad-free week and then cancel cool but i think you'll stick around when you realize all the content we've got all the exclusive shows like the after dark show and perhaps the after dark mailbag that's not a show yet but with dino giving me that idea we may be able to squeeze that in somehow but we'll uh we'll talk about it all right that'll do it for me thanks everybody for listening take care Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to wwepodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to patreon.com slash WWE Podcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.